big sweeping things. So it's not how it works. It's it's little things. It's changing a, a two to a five, you know, and and it's it's you really have to be there to find out exactly what needs to be changed. This is Blair Durham with Black Wall Street Today, your media hub for all things black entrepreneurship, politics, news, and events in Hampton Roads and beyond. Wouldn't you like to be a guest on Black Wall Street Today with Blair Durham? Well, well, well. the link is in the show notes. And now, here's your host, Blair Durham. Greetings, greetings, Stay greetings, greetings. I'm joined now by Delegate-elect A.C. Cordosa. He was born to a family full of work ethic and a belief in service to our nation. Growing up, A.C. spent many days working with his father, learning the value of hard work and technical precision, serving as an apprentice to his father's construction projects. Enlisting into the Air Force to serve America was AC's destiny, as generations of Cordosas had done before him. Following a service of three years, AC honorably left the Air Force and sought to further his education at Thomas Nelson Community College. There he began to gain interest in politics during the 2008 presidential campaign as a possibility of the nation electing the first Black president. Soon after the election, Election, AC began reflecting on the policies of the new Democratic Party, finding that his core values did not align with the Democrats, rather the Republicans. Today, AC works in cybersecurity for Newport News Shipbuilding, where he focuses on keeping our naval assets safe against enemy threats. He lives in Hampton, where he serves as vice chairman of the Hampton Republican Party. Welcome, Delegate-elect Cordosa. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, I'm excited to have you on. Uh, I think this is an important conversation. Um, certainly, I know that you are looking forward to the days ahead and uh, serving as as a member of the House of Delegates. Funny story, I was actually a page in the House of Delegates back in 1998. <laughs> so I know those chambers well. I know you must be excited. I'm very excited and, and happy to uh, to serve the people there. Yeah, awesome. So I want to jump right in. Uh, it, it, given today's sort of climate and everything that has taken place, given today's world, the politics, the social climate, what exactly does it mean to be a Republican? Uh, well, uh, to be a Republican is, uh, means that we, you know, we have a uh, we have conservative values, uh, strong morals. Uh, you know, we, we want lower taxes. We just want things to be more affordable for people. We want uh, our, our, our streets to be safe. Uh, and we just want everyone to, to be able to prosper in a free uh, free environment. Got it. And I understand that you represent the 91st district. Where exactly is that located in the Commonwealth? So that is uh, about a half of Hampton, all of Bocosin and a little bit of York County. Okay. Makes sense. So what are some of the goals for this particular legislative session? Some of the um, the key items on your own agenda? Well, we have some bipartisan bills to make Virginia safer, uh, uh, a new uh, alert uh, for people who are, uh, have mental and uh, physical handicaps so that we can begin searching for them immediately instead of waiting the 42 to 48 to 72 hours. Um yeah. Also, we you know want to fully fund the uh, cur- the current uh, missing persons alerts we have that aren't fully funded, and uh, uh, you know making sure our African American uh, historic c- cemeteries are taken care of and upkept. Uh, you know, tax relief for our veterans, health care for firefighters. Uh, I actually have a bill that uh, will translate essential tax information for Virginians who speak English as a second language, uh, creating a department to, 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 to do that so that we can everyone be able to understand their tax forms and uh, you know, pay on time and not have to accrue a lot of uh, penalties and, and interest. Yeah, these seem like important objectives. Um, I know oftentimes when we think about politics, we want some sort of sweeping change, but I'm learning that sweeping change is, is made sort of one, one, one foot in front of the other, one small change um, at a time. So, so this makes sense to me. You're the very first Black delegate from the 91st district. Uh, what does that mean to you? What will it mean for uh, for the district that you represent? 
Um, it means we're ready for something new. We're ready to move forward with a more inclusive Virginia. You know, the governor's from the private sector. He's not a, a, a longtime government uh, officer. He's a, a, I personally know him very well. And uh, he's, he's not your, he's not an average politician like myself. Uh, he's, uh, for, uh, you know, we have the first black female elected uh, lieutenant governor. We have the first Latino American to serve as attorney general. And we, you know, I'm the first black delegate for our district. You know, it proves that neither party owns progress. And it proves that just because Republicans won doesn't, you know, it, it, you know it, it's not a, a bunch of uh, uh, your typical Republican image that you, that you think of. Yeah. Interesting. Well, let's let's talk about this then, um, thinking specifically about the pandemic and thinking about the African-American economy, um, particularly a disproportionate impact. Right. They say that uh, whenever something goes wrong, it tends to impact the black community hardest. It tends to impact the black community first. Uh, We know that there is a disproportionate impact. So. How do you hope to address that? I noticed those were in terms of discussing your goals, not exactly on that list, but what are your thoughts about um, how that gets to be addressed in your in your term there? Well, uh, I'm looking to support and and hopefully join a minority business commission so that I can uh, better uh, see exactly what are the things we can do to to affect change in that area. Um, you know, I represent Hampton University, and that's not just something to brag about. It's a constituency to listen to. Uh, and, you know, from from faculty to students, it's people that I need to listen to, and I need, I, I need uh, input, and I want to get on the commission and see what I can get from our minority business commission to see what where exactly I can make change. You know, laws are not, um, laws have to be very specific. And uh, you have to really be in the trenches to really find out exactly what specific changes you can make. As you said, big sweeping things, that's not how it works. It's, it's little things. It's changing a, a two to a five, you know, and, and it's, it's, you really have to be there to find out exactly what needs to be changed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and, you know, I know this is, this is, this is new and this is exciting. Um, but the reality is the representation is is important. Uh, I'm looking now at Cordoza for Virginia dot com. I certainly would uh, you know, if you're interested in getting a bit more familiar with AC Cordoza, what his values are, what he represents. Visit the website Cordoza for Virginia dot com. I'm on the on the platform page. Um, kind of viewing the pieces here. I know one of the things, one of the conversations that is frequently had in our community is around criminal justice. You know, and I see that criminal justice reform is, is also a priority. Is that something you want to speak to as well? Well, yes. You know, we, we want to make sure that our justice system is fair for everyone. You know, uh, it's going to, we want to make sure it's effective, but still fair for everyone. And, you know, it, we know in our community, it has not always been, and it's, it's time to make sure that we can hone in on that and make sure every, everyone, has is innocent until proven guilty uh, that we're not over sentencing people and, and we have a fair sentencing across the board, regardless of your, uh, your color, your, your, your gender. We just want to make sure everyone has a fair shot in the, in, judis- in the judicial system. But we also want to make sure people don't end up in the judicial system. Uh, mm-hmm. We want to try and prevent people from going into the judicial system at all. That's the best way to make sure that there is no no issue. That you never get into that system. So that's what we're working on. Well, I, a lot of crime stems from economic uh, hardship, and we want to fix those economic hardships. Sure, 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 sure. I like what you mentioned here is that um, criminal justice form requires a uniter, not a divider, to accomplish uh, to accomplish these tasks. I think that's that's important as well. Um, so safe communities listed here, environment, obviously taxes, education, uh, reference here to Second Amendment constitutional rights, um, mm-hmm. particularly supporting rights to self-defense, 
uh, military veterans and family resources. You are a veteran, so obviously there's a priority there as well. Healthcare. Let's let's speak to healthcare um, if we could. I, I know we talked about uh, certain goals that pertain to healthcare for certain um, sex of the population. Generally, though, what is what's your perspective on healthcare, and how do we move the needle so that healthcare is more affordable? Um, and I think particularly about the small business owner, right, that's looking to provide healthcare for their family and the families of those that they employ. What what does that look like? What does that mean? What are your thoughts? Well, you know, I'm I'm gonna be honest. I'm not an expert on everything. Um, I'm not I, I'm I'm not in the healthcare field. Um, so I don't know everything, but I, I do have advisors and um, I, I, I kind of listen to what they're what 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 they give me a, uh, is the uh, are some of the best solutions to a health care problem. So health care is extremely complicated. Uh, health care bills are so long. It's just they're like books. So yes. uh, and not being in the field myself, I'm not an expert, but uh, I do have common sense you know when someone tells me you know what these things mean you know if someone says yeah you know we need to we're currently kicking people off of uh health care because they have this condition you know that's not that's not smart that's not the right way of doing things now i do have a bill for Hans university proton therapy because right now it is not covered by health care and that's a problem we need to uh we need to address and actually and fix. So that is one thing I am working on in healthcare to make sure that Hampton University Proton Therapy is a a, a covered procedure. Because instead of paying for expensive medicines that, that can poison you, and we can get a fix that actually just works, doesn't affect other parts of the body, and it really is is effective. It's quick. It 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 can help fix the problem very fast. Why are we having people pay for expensive medicines that are not as effective? You know, it's it's that's a common sense thing. Even though I'm not healthcare, that's a common sense thing. We want to get the procedure that works, is safest, quickest, and most effective, be covered by insurance. And that should be common sense. Yeah. All right. In the minute or so we have remaining, give us some perspective as to what the. Uh, what the house session even look, looks like. So when does it start? When does it end? What do you expect it to accomplish during that time? What is the, the workflow? Um, just to provide some, some, some context to those that might be listening that may be unfamiliar with the process. So uh, the, uh, the session begins this Wednesday, January 12th. Um, and uh, it ends March 12th. So it's a 60 day, uh, uh, session. It's a budget session, so it's one of the longer ones. <laughs> so, what it's going to look like is it's going to be um, personally. I'm carrying about 15 bills. Um, what that looks like is uh, every day there's caucus meetings early, uh, and then there's meetings with constituents, and 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 there's uh, there are lobbyists who come in and try and 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 give you some ideas of some things they feel need to be done. And then, you know, we have uh, the floor at, at noon. We go on the actual floor at noon. Um, so, you know, it's, it's and then the day just goes on and on. Usually we're we're in working until about nine to ten every night. So, so from 7 a.m. to nine to ten every night, because this is a, a uh, it's not a full session like most legislative bodies. It's not throughout the year. We take in that same amount of work and condensed it in from 12 months to two months. So it's extremely busy. It's extremely fast paced. So it requires someone who just has a, a certain level of focus. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I want to thank you so much, uh, Mr. Cardoza, for your, for your time this morning and certainly um, <clears throat> what this session is going to, is going to bring about. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you for tuning in to Black Wall Street Today. Continue the conversation via our Facebook page at Black Wall Street Today and request the feature by visiting our website at www.blackwallstreet.today. Be sure to join us next Wednesday at noon as we explore the world of business and opportunity right here on Smooth 88.1 WHOV.
This show is brought to you by the consulting services of Positive Vibes Incorporated. We do credit fixes, we do debt restructuring, and we put money in the pockets of real estate investors. So give us a call. We can fix your credit. We can restructure your debt. And if you're a real estate investor, I would love to put thousands of dollars into your pockets. 757-932-0177. That's 757-932-0177. Phenomenal. Stay with us online at Black Wall Street Today on Facebook and Black Wall Street Today on Instagram. And then follow us on Twitter as well at BWS Today. We look forward to talking again next week. Have a wonderful week. I have said and I will continue to say that the most important priority for the black community is the black community, not a particular political party. Hey, yo, when I say black, you say Wall Street. Black.